Welcome back to Arm 3D. Today I want to talk to you guys about conditions. Now conditions inside of video games are really important because without them it wouldn't be an interactive experience. You see if the computer doesn't know when to do these things and it doesn't have limits to when it is allowed to do these things then everything is just going to happen all at once and it wouldn't be a video game because there's no control, there's no interactivity. So conditions are really important but you have to remember that they rely on data and so there are five different types of data inside of Arm 3D. We have floats, which are any number, including decimal numbers. Then we have integers, which are any whole numbers, as in 1, 2, 3, but no point something numbers. Then we have strings, which are any word, and it can also be numbers. And finally, we have booleans, which are a yes or no answer, a true or false. And last but not least, we have dynamic. And this is something uh, more specific to Arm 3D because it encompasses all of the previous ones. When we want to make a, a question, a condition inside of Arm 3D, we need to go ahead and find a specific node. Now this node is the gate node. This is the general purpose node for all of these general situations. You see the gate node has many different functions. You can add in an event, something to trigger it. This can be a custom event or it can be an on update node or even an on timer node to see when it should check for these two inputs to see their relationship. Now we can determine the relationship and what we're looking for by changing this slider. It can be equal, not equal, and almost equal, which means it basically interpolates is it close to that value that we're looking for. We can also do things like is it greater, is it less. For example, we can use this node to determine if our player is below the map. For example, if our player falls off the side of this uh, parkour game, let's say, and we don't want them to continuously fall. One way to determine whether he's fallen or not, and to restart the game if he is, is one, add in a collision mesh, as in a, a, an elongated cube all the way under the map. However, this relies on collisions, and if your player's fallen really, really fast, it might clip through that collision mesh, and your player will be fallen forever and be forced to restart the game. However, using the gate node, we can determine if the player's position is greater or smaller than a specific value. So you can set your custom uh, ground level that your player, if it goes beneath, will automatically restart the game. But you'll notice this gate node, which is essentially a question asking node, has two possible outputs, either yes or no. Now this sounds a lot familiar because we just talked about booleans, and booleans are a yes or no condition. And so it's perfect for this type of thing. And there are much better nodes if you want to use a yes or no condition boolean value to determine if something should happen or not. And that is using the branch node. Now, very similar to the gate node, it has two possible outcomes, yes or no. However, this is specifically a single boolean input. So it only determines if this single boolean is checked or unchecked. Now I made a whole video talking about variables, so you can go check that out if you want to learn more about booleans. But essentially you can use this to do a, a whole bunch of different things. For example, is our player supposed to be active or is our player a passive observer? We can have a simple boolean because it's a simple question. There's only two possible answers. So using this function allows us to determine which answer is the correct one and we can modify it accordingly. We also have two other nodes that are to do with the booleans. That is the while true node and is false is true. We have a bunch of nodes like this that are very similar in each other but they have slightly different outputs and slightly different options. You can see the while true node is essentially going to determine constantly if this thing is true and if it isn't true. So it's a bit like a non-update node. You don't need to trigger it with a specific single event. It can happen continuously. Now you'll notice that booleans are quite prolific when we're talking about conditions because they have a very simple yes or no answer. Unlike many things like the transform which contain a bunch of different float values, so ha having to compare those you'll have to use the gate node. But there are many more tools to be able to compare single answers, either yes or no, and that is using booleans. We have things like output to boolean which converts an event into a boolean, or we can just invert booleans using the invert boolean node. More importantly, if we look at the keyboard nodes, for example, for doing key combos, we can go ahead and grab a keyboard, set it to W for example, and you see we have an event which is the red socket, and this is what's going to trigger it, and what we can do is plug in an is true node, and then plug in another keyboard set to shift for example, and instead of using the event we can use the state, which is the pink boolean socket, and plug that into the is true node, and this is going to create our key combo, so whatever comes out of that output from the is true node is going to be the key combo, because whatever event you're going to plug in is 
only going to happen if both of these keys are down at the same time. And that is how you create key combos using booleans. And that is the reason that we do have boolean conditions for our events as well. Really powerful stuff. I really hope you understood and take a lot from this video and that you're able to understand much better. I know we talked a lot about booleans, but really when using the gate node, it's really easy to do. You just add two conditions, two values. It doesn't matter what they are. You can, for example, add a maximum or minimum position that the objects can go past or can't go past, for example. And we can go and do a bunch of different things of that nature. And we'll be talking a lot more about it in future tutorials. So if you do have any further questions, then leave them in the comments and we'll get back to you. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you again someday.